Hey, this is Travis, and in this series, I've been showing you how a Web3 user onboards into the crypto ecosystem. We went over some foundational topics in the first several videos, and in these next several, I am diving deeper into the technical side and talking about what is happening on the back end. So specifically, what I'm going to cover in this video is when you send Ether from your Web3 wallet to another person's Web3 wallet. And I want to talk about specifically what is happening on the blockchain in order to make this happen. Well, in this video, I'm going to be sending some Ether from this account one to account two right here. And I want to start by talking about something called Etherscan. This is a service that's called a blockchain explorer. And it basically is this UI that allows us to explore the blockchain to look at the different accounts on the Ethereum blockchain. So I copied my address one. This is address one right here. I can click into it and I can see that, oh, actually we should probably make sure that we're on testnet. Right now this is looking at Ethereum mainnet and it sees that nothing is, let me do ether scan coven testnet. Oops, ether scan coven testnet. Okay, so if I search for this address, okay, now it's showing uh, that I, I have an account balance 0 0.0003, which matches what this UI is showing 0 0.0003. And I should also have some uh, other tokens as well in here. Um, yeah, die as well 2.81. So um, what I'm trying to show here is that a blockchain explorer allows you to look more in depth on the blockchain data that is being held by the different Ethereum nodes. And I can, so I can query addresses. Uh, people can, anybody in the world can do this. They can look into my, into this address, see what my account balance is. And then we'll also be looking in this video at things like transaction hashes and blocks. So blocks contain transactions. So I can go in and see all the different transactions that a block has within it. I can see which validator um, created that block and then also uh, what block height it's at and all these other details that we're going to cover here in a second. But I wanted to start this video by explaining what a blockchain explorer is. So now let me start with the process for what happens when I send Ether to a friend. So the first thing my wallet does, what MetaMask does, is it creates a, something called an unsigned transaction. This is just, it's basically a data packet, a transaction. We're gonna think of it in terms of an envelope and it has specific data associated with it. So if I'm sending Ether to an account, it's going to say, send this much Ether to this account address from the originating wallets account. So you can think of it just as like this from to an amount, right? Um, we're not going to get into the details on what a transaction looks like. That's more of a computer science topic. And unsigned transaction is it's also called a raw transaction what a wallet does on the back end is it signs the transaction with your private key this is what unlocks your crypto in your wallet is when you sign the transaction with a private key it's called a digital signature and again this is another computer science topic but just think of it at a high level that we go from a raw transaction which is invalid by itself if we sent it to the blockchain it would be rejected but when we sign it with our private key, it becomes a signed transaction, which is then ready to be sent to a validator on the Ethereum blockchain. And when this transaction first comes in, the validator is going to check that it is a valid transaction, that the signature matches my address or a public key, right? So it can say that the 
Only person who could have signed correctly signed this transaction is someone with the private key. Um, so this is how a validator validates the transaction. And and they they confirm it. They make sure that this is the that this looks like a valid correct transaction. And this transaction goes into the validator's mem pool. It's called a mem pool. And it's just a temporary store of confirmed transactions that that validators will have um, before they create a block. All right. So now we're on to creating a block. And this is where we start to get into the concept of what a blockchain is. A block is just it's again it's a it's a, it is a data packet just like a transaction but it's a bigger data packet and it contains confirmed transactions so every 12 to 14 seconds on the ethereum blockchain a develop or sorry a validator will create a block by um, taking confirmed transactions in its mempool and it assembles this data packet with multiple confirmed transactions within it and this is called a new block right here. In a blockchain, this is the this is an unconfirmed block. We have it in orange right here. But a blockchain is just a it's just the full data structure of all the blocks that have ever existed on the Ethereum blockchain. So we can go all the way back to the Genesis block, which I think it was started June 30th of 2015. This was the very first block that ever occurred on the Ethereum blockchain. It was this block to start it off. And then ever since then, it's gone one, two, and it's counted up. And now we can look at, let's, let's look at the, um, yeah, this is still the Coven um, blockchain right here. We're at this number right here. What is that? 30 million blocks since the genesis of the Coven testnet. If we wanted to, let me just copy this URL so I don't lose it. If we want to see what the mainnet blockchain is at, we are at this many blocks right here. 14 million blocks on the Ethereum mainnet. If you go all the way back to block zero, the genesis block that was started June 30th of 2015, I believe. Maybe I have that date wrong, but I think the year is at least correct of 2015. So this is seven years, see, years worth of data and a new block is added every 12 to 14 seconds by a validator who creates a new block with new transactions that have been coming in from clients, right? So my client sent a send ether transaction to this validator. We can have other transactions coming in from other clients, people running um, wallet software, like using decentralized applications. Those are also um, transactions that get added to blocks. Okay, so once the validator has created this new block, and by the way, all validators store this blockchain locally on their system, on their server. So the this validator who created this block is going to propagate the block into the rest of the Ethereum network. So the validator is connected to other validators and it's gonna send that data packet on and the validators are gonna confirm that this looks like the correct block, that uh, when I say correct block, I mean that the block is following the rules for um, a valid block. We could go into more detail on this, but that is not for this video. Again, that is more of a software engineering topic on how these validators check the block, make sure that nothing malicious is happening. It would be, it would, you know, like when I say something malicious, a validator could add a transaction in that pays their wallet like a thousand Ethereum or a thousand Ether, right? Um, they have incentives to do this, but the validators are going to be checking and making sure that these fraudulent transactions don't come in and that the this validator was following the rules for creating a block. And this is called coming to consensus. Basically, they confirm that all of them confirm that this is a valid block. And then they add this block to the top of their blockchain. 
let's see. So these validators propagate it to other validators. This is the entire Ethereum peer-to-peer uh, -peer network right here. And now we end with this validator having updated the blockchain. So now let me quickly run through an example here where I'm going to, I'm going to go to account two, I'm going to copy this address, go back to account one. I'm going to send to this account two address. I'm going to send, let's just put in um, point. Yeah, let's just send point zero 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 one ETH. We've got a network fee and a delay as we've talked about before, and we're going to send it. And I'm going to go into this transaction right here and show you some more details. See right here, um, view on block explorer. Awesome. And copy transaction ID. I think it would do the same thing. See it already got confirmed right here, but let's view on block explorer. Look, it takes us back to ether scan and we can see that this is the transact transaction hash. So this is like a unique identifier for this send transaction that I just sent. It has all the details in here for um, what I did. I sent 0 0.0001 ether. This is the network fee that I paid. Um, what else can we get? This is the timestamp for when it was received by the validators. Block confirmations. I'll talk about this in a second and it's success that it has been, this transaction has been accepted by a validator. It's been included in a new block and that block has been propagated and accepted by the rest of the Ethereum network. That's all what happened just in the time that we've been looking at this. Um, yeah, so yeah, from and to, so it's showing you all these details. And again, I want to emphasize here that the blockchain is a publicly accessible database. Anyone in the world can see that, can see all these details that I'm looking at right now. And this is different from many other payment networks that are private. Okay, now let's look at block. That this block was the 30 millionth something block on the Coven testnet, and there were five other transactions included. And so my transactions, one of these five, these other four originated from other clients that were doing stuff on the Coven testnet around the same time. If you see right here to contract, these are clients interacting with smart contracts on the blockchain. If you go back to one of my previous videos where I used swap, the Uniswap, and I swapped one token for another, this is sort of what my transaction would look like. In this case, I was sending money from one address to another. Uh, in these other three cases down here, the client was sending a transaction to a, um, a smart contract in order to, uh, while they were using a decentralized application. So this is how the blockchain gets updated. A client sends a transaction asking to do something. In this case, I'm sending ether to a friend or to another person's wallet. That transaction gets sent to a validator. It gets confirmed and accepted by a validator and included into a block. This block gets sent and propagated through the rest of the Ethereum network. They confirm the block and then if it is valid, they add it to their blockchain. And when it gets added to the blockchain, this is when the transaction has been confirmed. It's when it goes from pending to confirmed. If we look at right here, let's just go here and we're going to see, look, there's been 49 block transactions now. This continues to go up. And what it's saying is that 49 other blocks have been added on top of the transaction or on the block that that transaction um, is contained within. Now, when this transaction has been confirmed, when it goes from pending to confirmed, it means that that my account on Ethereum has like that ether has been subtracted from it and the ether has been added to the other account address over there. And if I wanted to spend that ether, then I need um, the private key attached to that address. So now let's go back and let's look at account two. I'm going to go and just copy the address for account two. It, it should update. See, it updated it right here on the UI. Uh, and then this wallet UI is just calling a an API that can read blockchain data. This wallet essentially is just reading 
data from the blockchain and it can now see that this address has this amount of ether attached to it. I can also go over to Coven, I can put in address two and I can see that this now has a balance of 0.0001 ether and I can see when that ether was from who it was sent from, when it was received, what block that transaction was included in, the transaction hash if I want more details, and so on. And we've already looked at this transaction over and over again. So not to beat the dead horse, but again, the blockchain is a publicly accessible database and the wallet is on the back end, it's calling, um, it's reading the blockchain data and updating it based on what the blockchain's state is. This is how the blockchain gets updated over time. And the validators are responsible for receiving, receiving incoming transactions, creating new blocks, distributing those blocks throughout the rest of the network, and updating the blockchain um, with successive new blocks. So this is the case for when I send Ether to another wallet or when I use any other decentralized application. All of this is the same. My client is sending a transaction, which is just a simple data packet to the blockchain. And I'm trying to include that transaction in a block on the blockchain. So the blockchain gets updated and that means that that transaction has been confirmed. It's the same for sending Ether and it's the same for using a decentralized application. So now let's look at what a decentralized application looks like. Um, we're going to look at the, the software architecture of it, compare it to web two web apps. So compare and contrast that architecture and, um, but understand that this is happening in the background when I send a swap transaction through Uniswap.